give you a couple of reminders. Um, number one, oh, is everyone here yet? Let me just wait for you to show up. How are you guys doing that's here already? How is everyone's Friday going? Um, I think it's going, it's going okay. It's raining, it's cold. I mean, it's so cold, and I'm like, it's May? Why is it this cold? It's freezing. It shouldn't be this cold if it's the month of May, I feel like. This is like February weather. My hair is looking crazy because I made an appointment at the hair salon. They accepted my appointment. They confirmed my appointment. I showed up for my appointment. And they were still closed. And I was not happy. Because I had to rush to get there. And I was like, my hair needs to be done. So I had to just wash it and throw it up. I didn't even try to slick it. Usually I slick it down a little bit. I didn't even try to slick it down like that. You're in Stockbridge, Georgia? Well, I hope you're coming to my retreat. My retreat is coming up. It's going to be in December. I have not officially... Um, announced it or started ticket sales yet. However, if you're on my email list, I'm going to be emailing you over the weekend and you're going to have first access to get a um, super early bird retreat ticket to the Love and Miracles luxury holiday retreat. I'm excited. I think we're actually going to do it at... um pretty sure i'm almost 100 i'm 99 positive we're gonna do it at um, the ritz carlton so i'm still like in negotiating and evaluating but for right now the ritz carlton has a strong run <laughs> they're they're in the lead so we'll probably do it at the ritz carlton which is in downtown atlanta and the last retreat was supposed to be in buckhead atlanta because i love buckhead but we're going to go downtown in um, in December. So I hope you'll come because you're close. Hopefully it won't be um, an issue for you to come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that as I answer these questions on today, they are spirit-filled responses that come from you. I pray for the women that are here and that are coming that... Um, <clears throat> They will also be hearing from you, even as I speak. Let these words truly be words that are drenched, saturated, and filled with the Holy Spirit's anointing to touch the hearts of your precious daughters that are here. I pray, God, that um, all of my sisters here on today are encouraged in their faith. I ask that you will give them divine and supernatural connections to bless friendships, covenant relationships in this season. <clears throat> so that none of them will feel alone, but that they'll all feel supported and loved. Surround them with other women that are like-minded, women of faith as well. I decree the blessing of God over my sister's finances. I ask that their bank accounts are filled and overflowing with funds to pay their bills and to be a blessing to others in Jesus' name. I thank you for protection on the lives of my sisters. I thank you for angels that are encamped about them, that nothing by any means will harm them. No weapon formed against them shall prosper, Lord. I thank you that their children are blessed, that you're keeping their kids covered with your blood and guided by your angels as well. And I thank you for your will, your desires, your plan, and your purpose being fulfilled in their lives in this season and for the rest of their lives in Jesus' name. Okay. So, <clears throat> oh, amen. A lot of times when I pray, I say in Jesus' name and I forget to say amen. Amen and amen. Is everyone here? People still popping in. Can you guys let me know where you're located? Let's start there. Where is everyone located? Um, where are you guys tuning in from? I am in Duluth, Georgia, which I say that I'm in Atlanta because it's this is considered the greater Atlanta area. It's actually not far from um, downtown Atlanta. I think I'm 40 minutes from downtown Atlanta. I'm only 20 minutes from Buckhead. That was my goal because I love Buckhead. I didn't want to be far from Buckhead. Um, <clears throat> so 
that's where I'm at. And and everything. Anyone here? Okay, I see Philly is here. Where is everyone else at? Where are you guys located? Oh, good. She said, the Father willing. Well, God is willing. You know how I know he's willing? Because you're here. If he wasn't willing, he wouldn't have connected us. He connected us for a reason. So I believe he's willing, of course. I see Arkansas. Italy. Hey, Italy. Where is everybody else at? Now, there's more than four of y'all here. Are y'all going to tell me? <clears throat> he did, didn't he? Divine Diva. Yes, girl. I'm excited to start working with a lot of you that I have not had a chance to work with before. And um, so I went ahead and opened up the doors yesterday to the six-week group coaching program. I haven't done that since January. That program since January. And the six-week group coaching program is the most comprehensive coaching program that I have available. It's six weeks long. Um, it is filled with so much. That's why I really want you to go read the details at the link of my bio. Not only are we going to work on you knowing and understanding who God is, but you knowing more about who God created you to be as a woman. There's confidence coaching that's in there. So I deal with the inner woman of who you are. And then I also help you with, um, we get started with your life purpose. We get started with help you to manifest more money in your bank accounts. Um, we also work on breaking soul ties. So there's some wife prep. There's some, some dating. There's some singleness. There's a whole portion of it that's dedicated to help you to make over your single season. So that you can be a whole woman of God. That program is packed. It comes with videos. It comes with audios. It comes with ebooks. Um, and it comes with live sessions. So we're going to have our live sessions in the month of June. So the program starts in June, but I want you to check it out now. Cause if you need to make payments, you can, so you can make two payments if you want, or you can pay in full. The early bird price is available right now as well. So, you know, I'm looking forward to working with some of you who, you know, you've been watching and, but you haven't had a chance to work with me yet, or maybe I haven't offered anything. That was right up your alley because the last program I had was the prophetic woman. So if you're not quite ready for the prophetic woman, which is the coaching program where I'm helping those women to step into the prophetic anointing and to start prophesying and decreeing and declaring the word of the Lord. Let's just say you weren't ready for that yet, but you really wanted to work on yourself. A lot of people will say that this is the time when you're single to work on yourself and grow with God and you don't actually know what that looks like in real time. So that's why I created the six-week group coaching program. I'm going to help you to work on yourself and grow with God. And then um, you'll also be able to meet other women of God like you. So if you've been feeling alone on an island, feeling different, trust me. Um, if you're called to me, there's something about me that is similar to you. So when you work with me in a program, the other women, you will also have things in common. You guys will be similar. So it's really a blessing when you guys can connect and work together and meet each other. And then I can work with you as well. So definitely check out the six-week group coaching program. It starts June 1st. And um, I'm looking forward to working with y'all. Now, let me answer this question right here. And then I'm going to move on. I'm gonna I only got a few questions. A lot of y'all didn't put questions up. In my story right now, I have a question sticker. So you can go to my story and you can see. Actually, I don't think you can see it now because I'm live. But I know that there's a way... Where you can ask a question while I'm live. I think it's at the bottom of your screen. I'm not sure because I don't really watch a lot of people live streams. And when I do, I pop in and I pop out. But I think that you can ask me a question right now, even though you can't get to my story. But I'm going to answer the three questions that are there. And then I'm going to go. And then I may come back later tomorrow and answer some more questions as well. Okay. So let's talk about, and I want to warn you, if you're new to me. You've never been in one of my videos. You haven't heard me teach or coach before. Just know that the answers that I give you are going to be based on the uncompromised word of God. All right. Every question that I answer is going to be based on the uncompromised word of God. It's not going to be based on flesh. 
what people are doing, what's popular, what your friend did, what you know somebody else did, is only going to be based on the word of God. So to answer this first question about whether you think a man sent from God would even entertain moving in together with a marriage, I want to pull from how to prepare for your future husband. This was the second book that I wrote in 2018. And I want to pull from this book because I'm going to answer this question. I'm not just going to give a yes or a no. This is a clear answer here. But I want to, again, I want to give you the fullness of where the answer is going to come from. It's coming from the Holy Spirit. Here's another thing that I want you to keep in mind. Whether um, he would entertain living together when you're not married. Chapter four of this book is called Adam is a high caliber and high quality man. So when you read the Bible, let's let's first think about this. Okay, here's what I want you to consider. I want you to consider number one. If a man is sent from God, that means that he is a potential husband, right, for you. I want you to think about what defines a godly husband. What defines a God-glorifying marriage? Because if I was to ask you guys that are here, 95% of you, because some of you, you know what I mean, you're in a different category. But 95% of you would say you want to be married because you want to glorify God and you want to fulfill God's purpose for marriage, right? You want to have a God-glorifying marriage. Now, you want, even though I say that, I'm not saying that marriage is only spiritual stuff. Obviously, you're going to have a companion. You're going to have a friend. You're going to have, you know, somebody to do life with. All those wonderful things as well. But you're also going to glorify the Father with your marriage, right? So... What does it take to create a God-glorifying marriage? It takes two people of God that are godly. Now, what is godly? Godly is not perfect. But godly is two people that are submitted to the will and the words of God. Now, what is the will and the words of God? You have the Holy Scripture, and then you have what God speaks to you personally via the Holy Spirit when you're in prayer or going throughout life. God is always talking. Now, with that being said, um, a godly man is going to do things that are in accordance with the word of God. He's going to be pleasing to the Father. So are you, by the way. So you have two people that are godly people that are coming together to enter into a godly marriage. So the question about do you think a man sent from God would entertain moving together? Number one, we need to get clear about whether he was sent from God or not. If somebody is sent from God, aren't they going to cause you to do things that's going to help you to get closer to God? Likewise, wouldn't they be living their life in the manner that's helping them to also grow closer to God? Ergo, they're going to make decisions based on the uncompromised word of the living God. Not based on the flesh, what anybody else is doing, or what popular culture might say they're going to make choices based on what is and is not pleasing to the father so i really want you to get clear about when a man steps forth is he coming from the lord or is he sent with an agenda from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you to distract you to get you off the path of god now i say all of that is somebody who has had a lot of experiences and the reason that I am a single mother today is because somebody was sent and I wanted to believe that they were from God and they were not. So chapter four, right? I usually post this up. I'm actually going to post this up today. This is a chart on page 19 and I want you to notice something on this chart. Now this book is available at the link in my bio. On this column, it says character traits and what does it say? Character traits and behaviors of your Adam. In other words, a man who is actually sent by God. Character traits and behaviors of a man who is not your Adam, a man who is not sent by God. How does a man sent by God operate? Let's read it together. Um, well, first of all, let me back up even let me back up a little bit more than that. 
When you want to define what are the characteristic traits of a godly husband, I want you to first start with Ephesians 5. And the reason is because Ephesians 5 defines what a godly marriage looks like, feels like, smells like, and how the husband and the wife should both operate. All right. That gives the clearest definition of all. Now, you can do a deeper study into other places in the word of God as well. But Ephesians 5 is the best place to start with defining what a godly marriage looks like and what a godly husband, what his responsibilities are. What did God command a husband to do? Ephesians 5. You're not going to see anything in Ephesians 5 that is going to lead you to believe that a man who is um, a God-ordained husband or a godly husband is going to want to do anything that violates the scripture. Now, if somebody was to say to me, well, Sarita, just because you live together doesn't mean that you're living in sin. It doesn't mean that you're having sex. And I'm going to say to you, that's exactly what it means. How many people do you know that live together that are in a relationship that are not having sex? Let's get clear about this, okay? Let's not be silly. Because I've had women say that to me before. I've had women say to me, well, we can live together and we don't have to have sex. And I'm like, yeah, right. You want me to believe that? I don't believe it, not for a minute. Um, when you living with a man, surely he's not going to sleep. Surely y'all didn't get a two bedroom and surely he don't have his own room. You had your own room. Okay. Y'all going to move in together and have separate rooms and separate beds. And he's never going to creep over to your nice warm bed to press up on your nice warm, soft body at night and think he going to get him some. Surely that is not the case. Y'all are not going to be roommates. So if you're living together with the man that you're in a relationship with, by the way, and let me also say this, you know how difficult it is to con- to keep your sexual urges at bay when you're not even living together. You're just in a relationship and you are growing closer together emotionally. You're starting to love him. He's starting to love you. You are wanting to be together all the time. You're wanting to get closer. You don't even live together. And when you guys do a movie night or a date night, it's hard for you to stay celibate. You got to set up major boundaries to make sure that you're keeping yourself pure and you're not even living together. Do you think that when you move in together, it's going to be easier? No. No. When you move in together... You're going to be having sex. And the Bible says to flee fornication. So, um, a man who is sent by God is going to understand how the flesh works, operates. A man who is sent by God is going to understand what it means to fornicate and why you shouldn't be fornicating. A man who is sent by God, hold on, let me turn this off because that's going to bother me. It's not even going to want to put you in the position to get to a place of where both of y'all are operating in sin. Fornicating is sin. Let's be clear. A man who is sent by God is not going to do things that's going to make you question. And y'all know people will talk you out of your celibacy walk and y'all don't even live together. And he are, he's still trying to have sex with you anyway. Do you really think for a minute y'all are going to move in together under the same roof? And you guys are going to be holy until you get married? No. You're not. A man sent by God is going to want to live a holy, righteous lifestyle that's pleasing to the Father. And he's not going to try to even, you know, he's not even going to try to um, recommend. Like, the idea wouldn't even come to his mind. You know what a man sent by God is going to do? He's going to be like, man... My feelings are so strong. My hormones, you know, I want to be with you so bad. Let's hurry up and get married so that we can be in the will of God and be in a godly marriage. And I can live with you and have all the sex with you that I want. A man of God is going to say, let's do things God's way. And since my urges are getting so strong for you right now, let's just get married. That's what a man of God is going to do. That's why you'll also notice that a true godly couple, they're not dating for five years. 
Because they want to have, having sex is natural. They want to have sex. So surely they're not going to be like, let's date for five years. No. They're going to be like, let me hear from God. Let you hear from God. You know what? We done went on three dates. I'm sure you're my wife. Let me start saving for the ring, planning for the marriage. Let me maybe get some more confirmation, but I'm sure we are going to get married. So why prolong this process and torture both of us? Let's just get married so we can be in the will of God and have a blessed, godly household. That's why godly couples are not engaged for a long time. They usually meet, date, get engaged, and get married in like a year, maybe a year and a half. It doesn't take that long. You don't. So. I wanted to give you more. Um, I gave you a bunch of scriptures right there. I gave you Ephesians 5. I gave you flea fornication. Uh, you can also look at the scriptures that talk about um, sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is all up and through 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The Bible talks about that a lot. Um, I want you to keep that in mind when it talks about living. Oh, as a matter of fact, I was going to read to you from um, a man who is of God and a man who is not of God. But I actually have a chapter in here about living together unmarried. I forgot. I just thought about it. Page 73. Ooh. Living together unmarried. Let's see what the Holy Spirit told me to put in here for y'all. Let's see what it says. It says... This is one of those so-called gray areas for Christians due to societal pressures to do what feels good or seems right instead of first consulting and submitting to the will of God. It is true that there is no scripture that says, do not live together if you're not married. There is also no scripture that says, when you're in a committed relationship, you shouldn't cheat, <laughs> even though you're not married. But we all believe this is wrong. And what do I mean when I say that? What I mean is, there's a scripture that says, don't commit adultery, right? After you're married. But there's not a scripture that says, when you're in a relationship, when you're dating, that you shouldn't cheat on each other. But you know that that's wrong. So I just use that as an example of some stuff doesn't even need, you know, it's already understood. Because when you understand the heart, the mind, and the will of God, when you understand the spirit of God, you already understand that that's wrong. Right? So... You can determine if it's okay to live together unmarried by seeking the Lord directly. He will explain it to you personally so that you can have understanding and clarity moving forward. The wisdom of God would say, it is not safe to live with a man you're not married to. Here's a short list of why it's not a good idea. You're going to have sex. Even if you say you're not, eventually you will. Your lives and finances will be intertwined, but you will not have the blessing of God on your household. The blessing of God covers husband and wife households only. It doesn't cover we're living together in sin households. Okay. You can live together and may never get married. Even if you plan to, there's no guarantee. How many people do you know? They have a long-term boyfriend and they never got married and then they broke up. Now they got to divide the households. You got the law of, um, what is that law called? The, the, um, what is that law? When you live together and you're not married and then you try to split your assets. All of that drama. You lose the blessing of conceiving and raising children in a household that honors God. Okay? You start having babies with him. Y'all not even married. Where's the blessing? It's not there. The blessing of God does not rest. On a household that is uh, based entirely upon living a lifestyle of sin. You have thrown the scriptures down the toilet and said, I want to do what I want to do, but God, I want you to bless me anyway. And God is like, are you kidding me? That ain't how this works. You have to do what the word says and you get the blessing. Now listen, I'm not, what I'm not saying is that you got to be perfect. But stuff that is clearly stated, like the, there's grace and mercy for mistakes. There's grace and mercy for when you are having a weak moment or a weak area. There's grace and mercy and forgiveness and love for when you are just not being smart right now. There's grace and mercy when you don't know no better. Right? You haven't been taught. Grace and mercy. But for you to outright know what the Bible says and then choose to do what your flesh wants to do, you're wrong. And the, ble the, the God is not obligated to bless you. And as a matter of fact, what you're going to experience is a whole lot of chaos that is going to be birthed from the flesh. Because the Bible says that when you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh. And of the flesh reaps corruption. So you're going to be in a household of corruption, death, curses. Why is nothing working? Because you're living outside of the will of God. Hello? Let me give you some scriptures. 
here are some scriptures to help guide you in your decision making. You may or may not agree with some of these reasons I have listed, but that's okay. What is important is that you hear from God for your own life, his plan, and his purpose from you. Hearing from God is key. Making the decision based solely on emotions or feelings means that you are being led by your flesh and not by God's spirit. You remove God's control and leadership in your life and decide to take matters into your own hands based on your limited human knowledge and beliefs. God can see what lies ahead. We cannot. It's much safer to trust and submit to him. Even if it feels as if you are losing, it will work out for your good in the end. Now, um, I say all of that to say that, um, do you think a man sent from God would even entertain moving in together before marriage? Number one, I don't believe he's a man sent from God if he does. Okay, so let's not even say he was sent from God. Let's just call it what it is. A man sent from the devil. And would he then entertain moving together before you marry? Absolutely. A man who is filled with his own uh, flesh and emotions and is led by satanic and demonic spirits. That is his goal. Fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's move in together. Let's never get married. Let's have as much sex as we want. Let's do whatever we want to do. Let's do whatever we want to do. You understand? Let's not be concerned about what God says and what the word of God says. Let's do what we want. He, he exalts himself above God. He becomes the God of your home. And then you have effectively also made him an idol. And again, there's no blessing where you're worshiping him as your idol. You're not saying that, but that's what your actions are saying in the spirit. There's no blessing there. So when you start to have miscarriages and stillborns and you have all this drama and stress going on in your household, listen, understand that that is not the will of God for your life. The will of God is for you to get married and have children and be blessed. Yeah, a common law marriage, that was what I was um, talking about earlier. When you start going through all of this common law marriage, all of that stuff like that, that is not the will of God. The reason why you have to even uh, pull that into the picture is because something went wrong. It doesn't have a blessed, happy ending. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in court talk about common law marriage. And there's one thing that you can guarantee is that when you don't th do things God's way, you will not get the blessing. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God when you operate outside of the kingdom of God. So, you know what I mean? Romans 12 and 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be a transformed and progressively changed. Oh, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. In his plan and his purpose for you. Is it good, acceptable, and perfect to be living with somebody you're not married to? And here's the thing. Everybody knows that it's wrong. That's why it's a question. <laughs> Christian women. Now, I ain't talking about when you was in the world. When you was in the world, you know what I mean? Even when I was in darkness, I knew that there was something wrong with it. I was not even a full-blown spirit-filled person, but I knew there was something wrong. I knew that you were supposed to get married, move in together, and have kids. Like, you know that that is the proper order of things, even if you, even if you don't know the Lord like that, you know? So then after you come to the Lord, and the Holy Spirit is now convicting and changing and trying to mature you and grow you, now you're starting to say, live together when you're not married? Something about that ain't right. You know it's not right, because the Holy Ghost on the inside of you is telling you that it's not right. We already know it ain't right. First Corinthians 7, 1 through 2 says, Now as to the matters of which you wrote me, it is well, and by that I mean advantageous, expedient, profitable, and wholesome for a man not to touch a woman, to cohabitate with her, but to remain unmarried, but because of the temptation to impurity and to avoid immorality let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband that is the scripture y'all now that's the amplified version so the part that says that you shouldn't cohabitate uh, with somebody you're not married to that's the amplified version 
1 Corinthians 6 and 18 says, run away from sexual immorality in any form, whether thought or behavior, whether visual or written. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the one who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5 says, for this is the will of God. This is the will of God. That you be sanctified, separated, and set apart from sin. That you abstain and back away from sexual immorality. That each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. Being available for God's purpose and separated from things profane. Not to be used in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God and are ignorant of his will. Y'all listen. You are not a Gentile. You're not ignorant of his will. So because you are a godly woman who knows the will of God, do the will of God. All right? And that's that on that. Oh, I have a prayer in here um, to help you with that. But I want you to check out that. So how to prepare for your future husband is what I was reading from. This book is available at the Love of Miracles book boutique. Got the link in my bio. All right, moving on. Let me ask another. I'm only going to be up here for a little while. Now, I could be a little long-winded. I'm trying to work on it, though. I want to keep, I want to have, like, shorter live streams, shorter coaching sessions, because I'll be going on and on, and then I'll be exhausted. Um, oh, this is a good question. <clears throat> what are the top three things you should do while you prepare for meeting your future husband? I'm glad you asked that. Now, today, I actually taught a wife prep class, so you missed it. Um, the wife prep class, it came with a wife prep plan. It was a personalized coaching plan for you so that you would know exactly what you need to focus on and prepare for while you're awaiting your husband to find you. Now, if you want, you can get, um, you can still get the class, but you'll get the replay with the workbook that it comes with. It comes with a coaching workbook. But again, I'm going to refer you to this book just to get started because chapter eight talks about building Here's what you want to do while you're waiting on your Adam to find you. Part two of the book is called How to Wait for Your Adam, or in other words, the man that you're praying for. You work on building your life, building professionally, building your ministry. That's what I teach about in this book. You work on, and then I coach you through it. Okay, so I don't just talk about it, but I give you stuff to do so that you can hear from God yourself and get clear about specifically what God is wanting you to do to prepare. Um, You work on growing. I have a chart in here of different areas that you need to grow in as a woman, as you prepare. Grow spiritually, immensely, uh, immensely, emotionally, mentally, and naturally growing. And then I coach you in the growing process. And you work on your purpose. Flow. Flowing in godly purpose. And then in this book, I get you started with um, life purpose and brainstorming, getting clear about what God has purposed you to do. And then I coach you. So at the end of all of those chapters, there's coaching. And there is action steps for you to take, all right, so that you can get started in preparing. Because I can't tell you what, these are the top three things. The top three things I just gave you, building, growing, and flowing, those are the top three things. Now, what does that look like for you specifically? I would need to know what you got going on in your life specifically. For example, if I was to talk to you about building, right, building your life. One woman would say, well, one of my goals is to be able to buy my first home, right? And I would say, okay, well, you need to work on building your life, getting things together so that you can buy your first home even before your husband finds you because you want to be a blessed and prosperous woman. You don't need to wait on a man in order to step into that life of prosperity. So one woman would say, my goal is to buy my first home, right? So you would focus on working towards purchasing your first home. Another woman has already had multiple homes, and now her goal is to create an additional stream of income from real estate. You understand? So part of her preparation process is going to be learning the ins and outs of creating investment properties through real estate development. She already has owned several homes. So y'all processes are different. Or let's talk about something else. Let's talk about spiritual growth. Let's say you need to prepare by growing spiritually as a woman. One woman may say, well, I need to grow spiritually because I don't know when God is is not speaking to me. I don't know when I'm hearing the voice of God 
or my own thoughts or the enemy. I don't know. I need to work on my discernment, right? So she needs to grow spiritually in her discernment. Another woman is like, I know when God is and is not talking to me. So she actually needs to step work on stepping into her prophetic anointing. She actually needs to work on prophesying a word of the Lord and operating at that level. She don't have an issue with discernment. Now she just needs to work on the next level of that, which is ministry and a higher level of ministry, right? So everybody preparation process is different. Now, now with that being said, you know, God is going to send you a husband where you guys are equally yoked. So if one woman is like, well, I'm just working on, I'm new to the things of God. I'm new to the faith and I'm working on hearing from God in prayer, knowing what his voice is, knowing what his will is. God is going to send you a man that is similar. You're at a very similar place, but he's able to cover you and help you to go higher in God. Whereas the woman who's starting to prophesy, she's already in ministry. God is going to call her, her husband is going to be a man who's already in ministry as well. And both of them are going to be able to reach more lives with their specific anointings because they're purpose partners. So depending on where you are, would depend on how you need to prepare. But no matter what, we all need to focus on building our lives, building professionally, building in ministry, growing, growing spiritually, emotionally, growing naturally, growing mentally, and flowing in godly purpose. We all need to do that. So get the book to get started or you can go and get the replay from today's wife prep class. It will help you with that as well. Okay. And like I said, it comes with, uh, it comes with that book and it comes with a coaching workbook. So they work together. So I really can help you to get clear about how you need to prepare. All right. Oh, and then don't forget, I got the six week group coaching program. So if you want me to help you and work hands on with you for six weeks, then the six week group coaching program is perfect for that. That program is so full of different things to help you prepare. And I cover the gamut because we got six whole weeks versus a one-time class. So we got six whole weeks to go into help you to grow in your relationship with God. One reoccurring testimony that I get when somebody works in my programs is that they're able to hear from God clearly and consistently. And I love it. Because once you can hear from God, your life is going to transform. Once you can hear from him and then obey him. You're going to see significant, drastic changes because you're hearing from God and you're obeying him. He's literally involved with your life, every area of your life. So there's nothing like being able to pray and hear from God. Man, I was just in prayer right now and got a specific strategy for, for something that is really, it's a major area. And I was like, Lord, I need you to tell me what to do here. I need your help. He told me what to do. My life is changing because I hear from God and I move forward. So uh, everybody that works with me, you know, in one of my programs always tells me they're able to hear from God. They also grow in confidence. They grow in understanding who they are as a woman. I love that as well. And then they get very clear about what their purpose is. So, you know, those are the areas that I focus on. But um, but that program is a well-rounded, the six-week group coaching program is a well-rounded program. So it includes a little bit of everything to get you started in multiple areas. And when you sign up, you get immediate access to two weeks. So even though we officially start in June, I wanted you to be able to get started with some stuff right away. So I didn't hold back this time. So as soon as you sign up, you get access to two weeks of the program. When we start in June, I'm going to give you the rest of the four weeks. And then we're going to have our live meetings in the month of June as well. So go to the link in my bio and check that out. And um, if you really want hands-on help preparing for your husband, okay? All right. <coughs> Vanessa said, do you think you'll do a conference style event or the prayer meetings? I will, but I don't know when. You know, I had a conference schedule and then everything went crazy. I had to, you know, so many things have been going on right now. You can't plan conferences yet. Now, my retreat is going to be in December. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that down. Okay, because in December, we should be free and clear. Everything will be reopened and um, you'll be able to travel again in December. But, um, so I, I only feel comfortable planning something for December and beyond, which means that right now I'm not, I'm not planning anything for 2021 cause I need to get this retreat. I need to get this retreat going first. So I'm going to have one. I just don't know when it's not going to be this year cause you can't even do it. Like it's not even possible. I wanted to have an event in August and it's like August is so close and it's in flux. So I could 
push for August, but see, I don't want to push. I want to be able to easily and gracefully be like, okay, this is when I'm having an event, book the space, I sell you tickets, and you show up. I don't even want nobody to be hesitant. If I try to have an event in August right now, you're going to be a little bit hesitant. Like, I don't know, stuff like that. There's so much going on right now. So that's why my first event is in December, and it's the actual retreat. Yep. So thank you for that, Janelle. Um, which coaching program do you take? Yeah, good question. Let her tell you which one she took. <laughs> All right. The next question that I have is, how to know if the man in your life is truly supportive of your purpose and calling? Hmm, that's a good question. Let me think about that one. How to know if the man in your life is truly supportive? That's a really good question. Here's what I do. Let me tell you what I do. <clears throat> so, because what I have found is that if a man is interested in you, he's going to support everything you do, right? Even if he's not a man sent from God, he's going to support what you do because he's not, he doesn't have any stake. He's not losing anything. He likes you as a person. He'll watch from the sidelines what you got going on. Be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But even if he's not your purpose partner. Now, here, here's the thing, though. If God is going to send you a man, it's going to be a purpose partner. So he's not only going to support, but he's going to partner with you in bringing it to completion. You're going to be partners. That's different than somebody just saying, hey, yeah, go. Good job. Have a good event. Right? He's going to be a partner with me in doing it. That's how I'm going to know he's truly from God. Because I've had men in the past who, of course, they support everything I do. But they weren't from God because they were not partnered with me in it. They were not invested in it at all. They didn't really care what I did. They were not a part of it. Another thing you want to keep in mind, and I want you to apply this to you. Because you know what your purpose is and your calling is. And you can see yourself. And what God, where God is taking you and how you're going to be serving and ministering to God's people. I really want you to think about the man that you're dating. If he would fit in with that environment. Would he fit in with that environment? Would he be able to cover you in prayer before you go out to minister? Would he be able to, as you're ministering, be there with you to help and assist? Would he be able to, or on the flip side of that, would he be embarrassing you? Would he be flirting with the women? You know what I mean? <laughs> you trying to get ready to minister and he flirting with chicks, sliding chick their number because he trifling. Would he be slipping up and cussing in front of all your people? Would he be embarrassing you? Would he be outside smoking a cigarette? I mean, stuff like that, you know? Would he really fit into that life? Would he be like... Yeah, I know you're about to go minister. I'm going to stay home. I don't even feel like dealing with no church people right now at all. Like, at all. I'm just going to stay home and chill. And you like, I need you with me. I need you to support. Not support, but I need you to be a part. You're supposed to be my partner in life. So, this is a very real question. Because last year, when I was in a serious relationship with somebody, I was. it was right when I was having my first retreat. And I was in, while I was planning the retreat, promoting the retreat, launching the retreat, I was in a relationship with him. But the closer I got to the retreat, I realized, I started to learn more and more about him. And I realized that if he was to be there with me while I was doing the retreat, he would mess me up. Meaning he would be in the way of my anointing, my prayer time. He would be, you know what I mean? Distracting me with stupid stuff. We probably would be arguing about dumb stuff because we bump heads a lot. You know, we didn't fight, but we bump heads a lot. So we probably would be bumping heads. And here I am trying to focus on ministering to women. And he would not be a good partner to go on a prayer tour with me. That's something that you got, you got to remember that. Because I was like, well, I started to think, because he was supposed to be there. He was supposed to be security at the retreat, actually, because I thought it was going to be more people there. So I wanted to have um, security and I was like, well, you could just come and do security for me. Okay. Make sure that um, when I am walking around, people aren't running up on me. Make sure that when I'm praying for somebody or, or when I'm going to and fro, people aren't running up on me so I can like focus, stuff like that. Just be my security at the event. Make sure that people don't show up trying to get in and they ain't bought no ticket, that kind of stuff. And he was big and tall. So I was like, you could just be my security. 
But when I thought about him being like with me, like in between, I, when I thought about him being with me the morning of, before I was about to come before you, or during the break time, me dealing with him, or, you know what I mean, him even being like in the vicinity, I just felt like his spirit was not conducive to what God was calling me to do. That is a really good gauge. So, you know, then I knew. It was then that I knew. And that's why I broke, I broke up with him in June. And the event was in August. After I broke up with him, I was able to focus so much on preparing for the retreat. And making it a real powerful experience. I was able to focus because I wasn't having to split my time being in a relationship with him. So I was able to take that retreat to another level. And I thank God that I broke up with him well before the retreat. And I didn't wait, you know, until after or right before. I broke up with him in enough time to where I could rebound and really make the experience more powerful because I was able to focus. I didn't have his perspective and his opinions. Because again, if it's a man of God and he is on board with what you are doing in your life and he's the one God has sent to help, to partner with you, his opinion and his perspective will be valid and it will be helpful. But because I'm dealing with somebody who is not sent from God, you are not my purpose partner. You are also not invested. Your perspective and your opinion is not helpful. It's actually doing more damage than good. You're causing me to question what I'm hearing God tell me to do. You're probably making me feel unworthy somehow. Um, You might be coming against my confidence. You might be getting me off track with what... You know what I mean? I'm talking about the reason my, my retreats are called Love and Miracles is because I'm expecting the miracles of God to be released in your lives. And if I'm dealing with a man who don't really believe in the miracles, he ain't seen the miracles. He's like, what miracles? Who are you to do miracles, by the way, Sarita? Because he don't see me like that. He is in the way and hindering and stifling my anointing. So that is what I, that is a good way to tell. That's what I use anyway. So whenever anybody I'm approached by dating, talking to, I really imagine, I know what God wants me to do and what he's called me to do. And I really imagine, can this be a man who's there and who is going to be a good partner to bring this thing to pass? It's not on him, it's on me, right? This is my vision. This is the purpose God has given me, but he should still be not just supporting, not just hand clapping me and saying, yeah, this is going to be amazing. You know what I mean? Because I got encouragement. It wasn't encouragement. It wasn't the issue. The issue was, would you fit? Would your spirit be in line and in, in tune with? And then even with um William's dad, it was like that with him too. He was so supportive. Oh, yeah, you should do this and this and this and this. You're giving me all these ideas, but you're not partner with me. Anybody can give you, you know, all of this lip. Yeah, you should do this. This is anybody can give you their opinion and tell you what you should be doing. And I thought because he was, you know, my because he was my best friend and I cared about him and I know he cared about me. I was really valuing everything he was saying. So whenever he was like, Yeah, you should do this with your business, you should do that with your business, I was listening and I was doing it and the stuff he was telling me to do, I was failing. He was giving me ideas that were crap, but I didn't think they were. Right? I thought they were good ideas because I didn't think of it. So I was like, oh, okay, I could do that. Yeah, you're right. I need to, so I'm listening to him advise me on my business, which is the ministry, right? This is the, this is the business, but it's so ministry drenched. I'm listening to his ideas that are not coming from the Holy Ghost. And I was failing. I was doing, I was losing money doing the stuff he was telling me to do. And I was like, this ain't working. You see? So if it is a partner from God, it will work. He's going to hear from God. His, his ideas is going to be wisdom from heaven. And you'll be able to tell. Not only is he hand clapping me and encouraging me to do it, but he's on board with it as well. Because he's a purpose partner. He is a part of it. He is in this thing with me. I'm not doing it alone. I remember also um, somebody else. Lord have mercy. One day I'm going to have some really, really good testimonies after I get married okay once the man of God truly come forth then I'll be able to give y'all all the, the blessed stories but for right now okay all I got is lessons learned so then there was the deacon okay and with him he was like um why did I bring him up when it came to my purpose and my calling and what I was doing oh he was the one that was sent by the devil 
to cause me to be completely confused and to second guess everything. He actually, I had learned later on, was there to shake up my entire faith foundation because um, not only was he deceptive in the beginning, but he started to drop little seeds of doubt, little messages and phrases of doubt to cause me to, to not even know if I was hearing from God, which by the way, he didn't even believe in hearing from the voice of God. So the fact that I was telling him I'm being led by God, he was like, you're not hearing from God, Sarita. I was like, yes, I am. I'm telling you, this is what God told me in prayer. He was like, how do you know what God sounds like? You don't know what God sounds like. Then he came back and told me that uh, because I go to church on Sundays, I clearly am not hearing from God. I'm hearing from the devil. And so you have people like that that will come in. But he was a deacon. So here I am thinking that because he has a title, and again, I didn't grow up in church. So as somebody who didn't grow up in church, and as somebody who thinks the best of people, right? I'm not judgmental at all. Well, a little bit. <laughs> anyway, for the most part, I'm not. So, I didn't grow up in church. So, when somebody comes forth and they're like, I'm a minister, pastor, preacher, deacon, I'm automatically like, oh, cool. I'm not like that no more. But back then I was. I was like, oh, cool. He a deacon. That means he's spiritually mature. He knows what he's talking about. He knows about the things of God. We're equally yoked. I automatically thought we was equally yoked. We were not. We were not. He was sent by the devil. And uh, he's in a spirit of error. His religion is a spirit of error anyway. And um, with that being said, how to know if the man in your life is truly uh, supportive of your purpose and calling, you need to really look at um, the fruit on that man of God's life, period. And then also see if he is invested. Now, in the beginning, he's not going to be invested so, you know, it's just, you're really going to get confirmation about that over time. But you also can tell just when you're having conversations about things you're working on. Because um, if you're working on something and the person that you're dating, you feel like if you were to tell them what you were working on, you know, it would make the conversation awkward. He can't be the one God wants for you. You should be able to, if I'm dating somebody, I should be able to talk to him about my retreat the miracles of God, the books I'm writing, what the Lord is showing me, I should be able to talk to him about those things and he should be able to be like, oh, wow. Yeah, that does sound like the Lord. That's amazing, you know? <clears throat> it shouldn't make him feel uncomfortable or awkward because I'm talking about having a prayer meeting and laying hands on people. And he shouldn't be like, laying hands? What? What do you mean by the laying hands? Miracles? <laughs> Or you ask them to pray, and the most prayer they want to do is blessing the food. Bless the food. Can you do more than bless the food? Or you don't even want to do that. You don't even want to bless the food. I say, come on, let's bless the food. You got it. I got it. Why I got to pray and bless the food? You supposed to be the spiritual head and covering. I need to hear some type of prayer come up out of your mouth at some point. You can't only be listening to me pray because I pray all day and all night. Any other questions? Oh, there's another question that came in. Let me see. And then, um, did I answer that? Oh, no, that's somebody else. How to know. Um, I'm going to answer this one in 60 seconds flat. How do I stand out from others my crush has talked to? You don't need to stand out. You need to focus on God. All right, next, how to know if the man in your life is the man you're supposed to be with. I don't want to waste my time. I got you. So how do you know? Number one, you need to hear from God. Number two, you need to look at the fruit that's on his life. The reason why I wrote how to prepare for your future husband is so that I really can not help you not to waste time. I want you to have a blessed and joyful season of preparation. That's what the season of singleness is. It's just a season of preparation. But I want it to be blessed for you. I don't want you to waste time either and give your heart to the wrong person. I don't want you to make all the mistakes that I made. God knows I made a lot. Um, but let me help you out a little bit more. Let's talk about the fruits on his life. Chapter 2 talks about Adam being a man of God. There's some fruit that you can examine to tell, number one, is he truly a man of God or not? Um, let alone whether you're supposed to be with him or not. But I want to start with that as a basis because a lot of times it's not, is he the one for me? Is is he actually from God? Is he truly a man of God? Or is he deceiving me? 
Once you can identify is he from God or not, usually you can rule him out pretty quickly. Because a mature man of God, I'm pro you're not going on dates with 20 mature men of God that got money. I promise you, you're not going to be picked up in luxury vehicles with men of God that are mature in the spirit, praying the house down. And you don't date 10 of those type of men at once. Those men are rare, just like you and I are rare. Spiritually mature women of God who are true Christians. Do you ever know, one time I was talking to somebody, this is like 10 years ago. And he was like something and I said I'm a Christian and he said oh you're a Christian he said um some of the best sex I had in my life is with Christians and I was like first of all I didn't talk to him no more but one thing that I realized in that moment now this was 10 years ago so I was like a baby Christian and what I realized in that moment was that even though I would tell people I'm a woman of God and I would think it meant something because I was a baby Christian. I didn't know a lot back then, you know. And I would be like thinking that if I'm dating someone and I'm like, no, I'm a woman of God, that it would mean that automatically they would know that I'm celibate, I live holy, um, I'm serious about the things of God. But what I learned was that that's not what it means. Just because you tell somebody a Christian doesn't mean diddly because there's so many Christians who it don't mean diddly for them. They're a Christian and you can't tell. There's absolutely no difference. You can see a Christian and a non-believer side by side and their lifestyles are identical. The only difference is that one person learned about Jesus Christ at Sunday school when they were eight years old. So they're technically a Christian. Which is a sad thing. And that's why God has me on this path. Because I was like, it should mean something. If you tell a man you're a Christian, it should automatically let him know. Celibate. Live holy, godly, love God, study the Bible, go to church. It should mean something. And uh, it's the same thing. I tell you that because I want to flip it around. It's the same thing when it comes to a man of God. If he is truly a man of God, he's a Christian, it should mean something. You should be able to see that he loves God. In word and in deed. It shouldn't be secret, hidden. I don't want to hear this crap about I got my personal relationship. When people say that. I got a personal relationship with God. It doesn't matter what you think. It does matter. Your relationship with God is trash. And I can tell you that because you're trying to defend yourself and claim you got a relationship with God and you actually do not. Because those of us who do, we don't even have to tell you that. I don't have to tell you I have a relationship with God. You know it because of the fruit that's on my life. Fruit speaks without me having to open my mouth and use words. But when you're dating somebody, you're using words to get to know someone. So surely there should be fruit out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. If God is really such a, a, a powerful part of your life, it's going to be obvious. You're not going to have to tell me, I got a personal relationship with God. No, you have no relationship. You have none. Just say that. You only pray to God when times get hard. That's it. And, you, and your prayer life consists of God help me. Times are hard right now. But let's be clear. You don't really have a true walk with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> My timer is running out. And I don't know what time it is, but I don't want to be on here long. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end this video. I'm going to restart it. And I'm going to answer about five more minutes of questions. Okay, y'all? Because I got 20 seconds on the clock. So if you type the question in, come back and retype it in again, please.